you know, I was thinking about this this movie the other day, and I think it's one of the most revolutionary Asian movies of all time. Hey everyone, my name is Sharonda Williams, and this is Group Chat. Do you love eavesdropping on informed opinions? Me too, y'all. The month of May is Asian Pacific American Heritage Month, so we're taking on a topic that frequently gets overlooked, AAPI representation in the media. And who better to dig into this topic than today's analyst? We've got a fixture of the K-Town scene, legendary battle rapper, musician, and actor, dumbfounded. Next up, you can recognize her from her incredible singer-songwriter career, her hilarious Vine account, or as an animated badass in the KDA video, Wolf Tyla. We have an iconic TV producer, journalist, writer, and actor, Ibs Abdullah Saeed. Finally, we've got the amazing, multi-talented musician producer, Idris. All right, everybody. So today we're talking about Asian representation in the media, what we have, what's changed, and what we need more of. We're talking about iconic movies that paved the way like Better Luck Tomorrow, The Big Sick, and even Harold and Kumar go to White Castle. Let's dive right in and talk about some groundbreaking Asian narratives available right now on Prime Video. First, we're gonna take a look at the Ivy League bound delinquents from Better Luck Tomorrow. Decathlon practices were always held at Derek's house. His methods were definitely unconventional, but effective. Beautiful. Go out, sister, paper. Oh. <laughs> I'm so unworthy at this moment. Dude. Dude, dude, you're gonna explode, man. No, like that. Better luck tomorrow. I actually love that movie. Um, if for cats who haven't seen it, um, go check it out. I think the the reason I loved it was it was like a community of Asians that knew the stereotype of overachievers, you know, that were Asian and kind of showed the types of cats who were in that world who whether, you know, kind of abused that stereotype and also saw the behind the scenes of like these people who look like perfect students or whatnot. So I actually thought it was pretty cool. It's really cool to see stereotypes being broken especially that early i mean this this movie is 20 years old you know what i mean and it's pretty ahead of its time in that way because you know we think about these stereotypes now and they were even stronger back then and there was so much less representation there were less people of these groups in in the country even to sort of work in in the entertainment industry so here comes this very independent project that really shatters that stereotype. I, I think that's that's something really special. I mean, I, I grew up out in Phoenix and uh, I grew up in the hood, so it's a little different from like, you know, what we just saw. It's, it's kind of like, like, like uh, college kids, suburban, like high school, college, you know, kids who have too much time on their hands. It definitely sounds like a film that's like breaking barriers, you know. This is Justin Lin's directorial debut. Most know him for the Fast and the Furious franchise, producing and directing some of the films. But to have this be the first film that really broke him into the industry, how does it make you feel? A lot of our personal projects in the beginning tend to be things that we can identify with ourselves, you know, culturally or whatnot. But we want to make songs, we want to make movies and shows and, and host things that are just complete, like, out of our world, you know? Um, and. and and I think that's that's what kind of Justin uh, Lin did right here, right? Like he went from something that's very him and Asian, and then he was like, nah, I want to do a blockbuster with cars and explosives. But you know, to break through, you have to tell your story first. Yeah. Uh, and the fact that it's in vogue, uh, that those stories are relevant, is an opportunity for anybody of a you know Asian American background. Well, next we're gonna take a look at Harold and Kumar from Harold and Kumar Go to White Castle. at the spot that was the best meal of my life you know i was thinking about this this movie the other day and i think it's one of the most revolutionary asian movies of all time like they this came out so long ago and this was before the the farewells the minaris and and all that and it was just about this yeah indian and korean cat 
just going to get White Castle Stone. It was like a stoner comedy, and they had three sequels out of this yeah. movie. Yeah, this is a really important film uh, because it showed an East Asian guy and a South Asian guy, and they're both cool. They smoke weed. Girls like them. It was redemptive for Cal Penn, who, like so many South Asian actors, you know, had to play the dork a lot of times previous to this. Uh, I think this is like one of the most relatable films for me because、um, it doesn't necessarily reflect on like. Asian like family values or anything, it just kind of shows what it's like being an Asian in America. And you know, I I didn't grow up like like my parents were cool, you know. They let me like do whatever <laughs> I want. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, this kind of this kind of felt more close to home for me because、yeah, like I think just like I think also just like moving away from like the stereotypes as well is just really great to see on screen because you know they're. There's definitely a whole side away from like the typical like oh you know the the Asian mom that made you play piano or like you know when you come around your grandparents like there's just it's humorous it's fun and it's also you know just there for just laughs and giggles and I think even just laughing like it it still brings the community together in some way. So next up we have Kumail Nanjiani's character from the hilarious The Big Sick. For me, I've been thinking. You know why you don't enroll for LSAT now? Yeah, sorry, Ma. I haven't done it yet. I like that you bring it up as if you've never brought it up before. How's the stand-up coming by? I, I think this was,、uh, you know, a very important film as a Pakistani comedian who dates a white girl. You know, I'm stoked to see this out there in the world. But I remember seeing this movie and thinking. I'm happy to see the representation, but that's not really my story, right? Like the classic, like mom who wants you to get married kind of thing.、Uh, nevertheless, like you know, I think a movie like this is almost more important for white people in some ways, the white audiences,、uh, because it's going to sort of demystify this minority to them. Again, I'm glad I wasn't the guy who had to make the first. Uh, you know,、uh, film about a Pakistani、uh, in this context because you know, I, like I feel like that, that's、uh, there's a lot of pressure there. But you know, this movie got Oscar nods.、Uh, you know, it, it was very celebrated. I, I appreciate people who had movies like Kamal, who like is very familiar with his community and probably a lot of times felt like an outsider of his own community at the same time because you can take a look at your community from the outside as well like anybody else would like a white person would or whatnot and i think some of the best shows and tv shows on a cultural level does that you know whether you're talking about donald glover as he looks at atlanta or like issa ray when it comes to insecure you know like i think also too just showing i think In movies like this, or movie censoring minorities, that we don't get to explore those different layers. That you know, not only are we trying to make it in our career, but we're trying to date. Like, what does navigating relationships look like outside of your parents, but navigating love?、Uh, you know, interracial marriage、uh, is a huge thing in, in the South Asian community because a lot of people、uh, want their kids to marry somebody you know of their own faith, of their own culture. But the crazy thing is that's the trade-off, right? If you come to the United States, you're coming for the opportunity, and a lot of times the trade-off is you're raising your kids here. They're going to be culturally different than you necessarily intended. No, I definitely feel like I could relate in that sense because my mom was actually the first first person to date out of her race. So it. Um, from just like hearing about her experiences, just with my grandparents and stuff, I think it was very.、Um, it was interesting, you know, when she brought home a black man. It was just like, okay, you you brought this six foot seven black man into the house, and I think it was very alarming or just very something different for my grandparents. But you know, luckily,、um, thank God, you know, I think. As you live in America, hopefully you know you get more open to、um, other cultures as well. So, next up, we're taking a look at the heartbreaking movie Gook, set during the 1992 LA riots.
was fun. Yeah, Gook, 92 uh, LA riots, obviously a huge event that kind of shows the the complicated relationships between Asians and, and the black community um, just all around. Shout out to my guy, Justin Chan, who, who that was his first ever film he directed and he stars in, that's him there. And, you know, in the, in the movie, he's like a dude who runs a shoe store in the hood and like, has this young black girl come come into the store and she has this innocence to her too, you know, obviously to maybe what's going on in the community too. And somehow they, you know, form a bond. But I think I, the LA riots to me is such a particular experience that I feel like can, you know, it can be brought up now and it's so it's still relevant, you know? Just being, you know, half black and half Korean, I think it's it's just really, really like conflicting and confusing um especially like growing up as well um i feel like i was never really educated too much on my black history like my black background so growing up you know i just knew hey like i, I look kind of different from everyone around me um and i think, think as i started growing you know i it was like I had a responsibility to myself to teach myself like, hey, this is exactly what you are. You know, you sometimes can't really look to your parents to, you know, educate you on who you are because, you know, you have one side where you have a black dad and then you have another side. You have an Asian mom and they live truthfully two completely different cultures. But I think one thing that, you know, that the mixture that I had that brought those two cultures together that were something that they had in common was the fact that um, that it was a minority, you know? I, I think also too, just showing the importance of solidarity, that sometimes the issues that might af affect predominantly one race, that it affects everyone if we don't stand up. And I think that we need more exactly. of this now, especially given where we're at in the world. We have to get out of this mentality of like, no, well, you do it first, you, you know, you weren't there for us or whatnot. Yeah, I hear it from every community, whether you're Asian, Black, Absolutely. White, Latino, like you didn't, well, they weren't there for us, but that's not how this works. You know, if you feel it and you see it being, you see people being affected by it, you got to kind of step up to the plate. It's not about someone doing it first, you know, like you, you see something wrong happening, right. then you got to, you got to do something about it. I've definitely heard this sense in other minority groups where they're like, ah, oh, well, that's their fight. It's not our fight or whatever. But the fact of the matter is that is the front It's everyone's fight. In, in the, yeah, in the battle for equality, exactly. Well, now that we discuss like all of these films, I mean, give me your final thoughts on where you're um, looking to or what ideas you have for more representation of Asian Americans in this industry. There should be less classism because that that's also feels like racism to me like amongst at least filipino community there's a lot of um, like lighter skin filipinos who think they're better and i don't know i just think that's like one thing that needs to be dissolved being more seen being more heard i yeah. think with anything in life the more you see it the more you hear it the more you see representation on film like on screen or you see it through the music or you see it in everyday life or even if it just goes as far as educating your friends it, it becomes a habit i want to see more characters on tv who ha show a lot of self-love you know we're talking about stop asian hate like really a lot of cats to take need to take a look in the mirror you know and just you know stop hating on themselves or who they are you know i feel like I want to see more characters where we try not to conform or be somebody else or a different group of people. I would also encourage people of Asian backgrounds, you know, if your parents envisioned you being a doctor or being an engineer or whatever those, you know, stereotypical things are, think outside of that, you know, think about what it is that you want. You know, those might be the things you want or you might want to be a comedian or a filmmaker. Well, it's totally possible. Well, I want to thank all of you for taking the time to participate in today's group chat episode. As always, let us know in the comment section below what did you think of today's discussion. And make sure you stay tuned for the next episode. Bye. Man. Whoa, oh my God. I see the See whole... you later. We have to try everything. Drink. Hello. Hello. I don't care about the show. I just want a good blooper reel. I want to learn. <laughs> Science. <laughs> <laughs>
guys are gonna make me look like I'm in the show, right? You're gonna put in the effects. Replace the green. I don't wanna look like an asshole here. Sorry. <laughs>